Hello and welcome to another episode of Faces of Next Gen Live. I am Eric Wells with the Education Coordinator for the Next Gen Genealogy Network. And my company is Legacy Left Right. And this is the show where we get to interview like about twice a month or so, we get to interview some next gen genealogists. And today is no exception. I am very excited that today in the interview seat, we have the hipster historian herself, Bex Coble. Bex, how are you doing today? I am doing well, thank you. Oh, cool. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Now, you and I actually have never met before. This is kind of like the first time that we've met face to face, sort of face to face. But uh, and we have a we got introduced by a mutual friend. But um, uh, I'm I'm so glad that you're here today. So I'm quite uh, excited myself. yeah. So tell us kind of what is uh you don't have to give the exact age, but tell us what your age range is like. You can or you can give your exact age too. I will give you my my exact age. I am 32 to be 33 in August. In August, so you're an August baby. I got some cousins married or not married, but born in August. <laughs> I, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I like August birthdays just seem weird to me for some reason. I was born in April and I, I guess I'm a little biased, but August is just, it sounds like a weird month. You know, it's a nice warm month, but when I was in school, uh, I hated it because no one could celebrate my birthday because it was not during the year. And so I got mm -hmm. stuck with no friends and no party. <laughs> so, so they would throw you a party and like no one would show. So uh, with genealogy wise, what, uh, how did you become interested? What was something that triggered your, your fascination with genealogy? Well, my mother has been a genealogist as long as I could remember, um, pretty much my whole life. But it wasn't until I left for college when I was 18 that she really started to get into it. And she went back to school for that and got her, uh, her bachelor's degree in it and her master's degree. And so it was always something that was on my mind. I did it growing up. Um, and then it was last year, uh, I was doing some research for a friend and I kept getting into it and I was like, why, why don't I do this more? And mm -hmm. I realized it was my actual passion in life for the last, gosh, 13, 14 years. I've been trying to find my passion and it turns out it's dead people in genealogy. <laughs> so when did you uh, get back uh, into doing it? Because it sounds like you, you were, gr you grew up in it and then you kind of like went your went your separate ways you and genealogy went your separate ways and then when did you kind of pick it back up and get interested uh, again it was actually about last not this november of 2017 but the year before so about the fall of 2016 um i was doing a friend's genealogy um and his uh, ancestors are from italy and i'd never done any italian research i hadn't done a lot of international research in fact that's kind of cool and, yeah and i really enjoyed it and i was like well you know what i might as well ask my friends on facebook Hey, you know, I have access to Ancestry. Does anybody want me to like look up stuff for them? I, I might as well. <laughs> um, and my mother probably hates me for that. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I, uh, I was like, I, I'll, I'll do this. You know, if anybody wants me to. And um, so I had probably a dozen different responses. And with that, I've been able to do a lot of research for friends and people have passed my name on to other people. I've now gotten clients because of that and started my own business because of that. Yeah, it's the hipster historian, right? Yeah, the hipster historian is my blog, and I also have a business called Life Stories Transcription Services, mm -hmm. where I do genealogical research as well as transcribing audio, um, visual, and written files and formats, old journals, audio files from uh, interviews you've done with older folks. Um, so I do all of that. That's that's kind of cool. Uh, so you you you're like a full fledged transcribing service. Anything that they bring you, you'll just uh, get it digitized, basically. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I've had um, genealogists come to me. I've even had the local college who had been doing interviews um, in one of their classroom settings come to me. I've done um, YouTube videos. Um, so basically, whatever people want, I'll do. Um, I aim it mostly towards at genealogy because I find those interviews a lot more interesting. <laughs> but I will do pretty much anything. I love it. I love it. Now we've got some uh, people here in that are watching this video, and if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. But um, so now you that was that's your transcription service, but you also have uh, the hipster historian. Kind of tell us like how did you come up with that? 
Um, well, the hipster historian, I like alliteration. Um, a lot yeah. of the things I do are alliteration. I'm going to be starting a uh, podcast pretty soon um, called Gin and Genealogy. Uh, Gin? <laughs> like, the, like, like the drink? Yes, like the drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the hipster historian came one night after drinking a little bit of wine. I decided I was going to start writing again. And I'm, I'm, I graduated with my degree in journalism and public relations. So I do have a background in very heavy writing. And I really have always enjoyed writing and blogging and I could never find my, my niche in, in blogging. And then I was like, well, maybe genealogy because there's not a lot of people with my type of skills that are younger. And I didn't know about Next Gen at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and so it just kind of came to be, I, I bought the name, I bought the URL, put it together and just started writing. And it kind of came together with another idea that I had of writing um, posts and stories about women in history, especially forgotten. Because as we all know, it's usually men who get mentioned in family history because women were kind of second tier to everything. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of started out with stories about women who I found in my my family history, my friends and family's history. And I would write stories from the facts that I could find and put together a small couple paragraph story about this is their life. This is what I found. Got it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so did you actually do some of the your own research on your own family or did you just kind of just inherit all that research? Uh, um, I've done a little bit on my own family, um, but it, my mother, like I said, is, <laughs> is a well-known genealogist. Um, and my younger brother is actually going into genealogy as well. <laughs> so I sort of, that side of the family that in my whole family, I'm like, well, y'all are doing that. I'll do my friends. Cause you know, that'll be fun for me. Okay. Um, but I do want to get back into mine um, in certain areas. Um, because certain areas I'm more interested in and there are things in it that I would really like to find out. But at the moment I'm currently delving into like 10 different friends, genealogies, trying to figure out stuff for them. Sure. Well, the question I typically ask is, um, what ancestor would you like to meet? But, you know, I guess in your case, you can, uh, since you've been working mostly with other people, we can, I can ask, uh, what any person that you've uh, researched, who would you like to meet? Uh, there's a couple I would like to meet personally. I think she's my third or fourth great grandmother, if I'm correct. Uh, her name is Catherine Hartman, um, and she was actually committed to an asylum in Michigan. Uh, really? About what? Uh, what city? Uh, it was the Eastern State Michigan Asylum. Mm -hmm. I want to say that's in Pontiac, if I if mm -hmm. I recall correctly. I lived there for a couple months. Um, but we have never you been lived, able to... uh, in the asylum for a couple of months. No, I wish I would have lived in asylum. <laughs> I love things like that. I lived in Michigan for a couple months, um, and uh, all we could find was that she died in the asylum, and that she was buried in a cemetery in the hospital graves. We don't know why she was committed. We don't know which one of the graves is hers because it just has numbers, and we don't have her number, um, and we don't know any of the reasons why she was there. And that is. Someone I'd like to meet to understand why she was there. Yeah. Um, because in my youth, I, I did have some issues with mental health. And I'm wondering, maybe it came from her. Maybe it came from that side of the family. I don't mm -hmm. know. But I'd like okay. to talk to her and be like, so why? What were you feeling? Did you feel the same things I felt? Um, so that's, that's one of the people I'd like to meet. Um, the other one is a friend of mine. And this story just just cracks me up. It's one of the, my favorite stories I found. She had a rumor in her family that her, um, her grandfather was a bootlegger. And as we've all heard, <laughs> legends happen. I mean, as genealogists, we know they don't, they're not usually 100% true, but I decided, Hey, I'll, I'll look into this for her. And I started looking into it and I started finding prison records for her grandfather. And I was like, well, that's interesting. And I ended up with a Montana state prison record uh of this gentleman and he went by the name of happy and <laughs> i was in the 19 let's say 1920s 1930s when prohibition was happening yeah. and he had the very gangster look the hat the, the, the whole thing and he was in jail for about six months for bootlegging Jeez. and Jeez. there was a journal entry written somewhere that um said the way that he got away with this is that he had a truck with a false bottom uh -huh. and his wife uh, had a 600 pound hog and so when they, they would put the, they put the, the booze in there. They'd load the hog on the back of the truck and they drive places. And people were too afraid. The cops were too afraid to move a 600 pound pig. They just got away with it. 
And I think that's the best stories I've come across. I was like, I want to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet that pig. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to meet the pig. I want to meet that whole story. And she, that the, the wife in that story even has an amazing story. She was uh, basically traded to an older gentleman for marriage and by her parents uh, for like horses and food. Um, and she was like, screw this. I don't want to be married to him anymore after a year and stole the horses and ran away. Oh, yeah. she- so, <laughs> so I love, I love the stories that my friends are like, I think I've heard this story. I don't know. Can you, can you find out if it's true? There's another one with a wife that, um, husband became very, very jealous. They had eight kids and with each successive kid, he's like, you're not spending time with me. I'm jealous of you. Um, and she said, if you ever hit me, if you ever hurt me, I'm going to go ask for a divorce. Well, about 20 years in, he did. He gave her a black eye, and she went to the judge with a black eye and says, give me a divorce. Oh, wow. He, she got the divorce, and uh, there is a journal entry written to her daughter or spoken to her daughter that said, by the time I die, I want a diamond ring on every finger on my left hand for all the issues <laughs> I've had in my life. And by the time she died, she had bought herself four diamond rings. Wow. <laughs> It's people like this and stories like this that I love finding because when I have yeah. my friends find this out about their family, they're like, wait, I'm related to that person. I was like, yeah, that's really awesome. That is cool. I love the whole storytelling uh, aspect of genealogy. It's it's not, it, it brings these people back to life instead of just the names, dates, and locations. Absolutely. And that's, that's a big part of it for me. Since I was a journalist in school, I have a big background in writing. I want to bring these stories to life. Right. Um, most people think they're like, they just think of old dead people or, you know, just names or dates. And these are people who live just like us. And I want to share their stories because I think it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the hipster, hipster historian. That's what you do. Pretty much. What was one of the, what was the most uh, surprising or interesting discoveries that you made? Did you, or did you already talk about them? Um, I think most of those were really interesting. Um, I did help a friend do a DNA test. Um, a lot of my friends haven't done DNA tests and they're they're interested in it. And so I really, I advocate for that because I think it's really important, again, because of family stories. And they're like, oh, I think I'm part this or part that. I was like, mm, just take a, a, a DNA test, you're fine. Um, and I had a friend who's who thought she might've been uh, native, uh, Alaska had some native in her but she wasn't sure. And so I actually, for her birthday or for Christmas, I bought her one. I said, um, go take this and you know, we'll get the results soon and we'll take a look at it. Mm-hmm. turns out that not only is she indigenous, she also is Czechoslovakian. Uh-huh. Um, and then there is some East Asian in there. And she was like, I had no clue about any of this. Um, so that was really fun for me. It was really interesting to do a DNA test because my siblings have done it and my both my parents have done it. And it's interesting to find out how much I've gotten from my ancestors compared to all my siblings. Because we're, we're both from the same parents. Right. But each one of us has gotten a different amount, which I find really fascinating. Now, when you presented the result, the DNA results to your friend, did you say, hey, check this out? Pretty much. I was like, hey, look at this. Oh, do you need to do some more research here? Or do you want to do this? And she's like, yeah. Um, I had another friend who I was doing research for who grew up here in Washington state. We haven't spoken in, oh gosh, years, but we are on Facebook together. And she's like, Hey, I have this information. I don't know anything about my mom's side. Can you help me? I said, sure. And I found out that her, I think great grandfather helped build the Oakland bridge. Wow. And the double decker one in San Francisco. She said, I believe so. I think that's the one. And she goes, Becky, I drive over that bridge every day for work. I had no clue that my grandfather helped build it. That's cool. So I, I I find stories like that really fun because it's I find things for people that they had no clue about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite books that you like recommending? Like genealogy um, or otherwise? Genealogy, there are a lot of books. Um, I don't know if you would call it necessarily a genealogy book, but it has a lot of history of where I live in Bellingham, Washington. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, Murder in the Fourth Corner, and uh, Whatcom County, where I'm at, is known as the Fourth Corner of Washington. And there's a series of books, and I wish I could remember the author right now, but he has written about murders in the Fourth Corner up here. Um, and we were a rough and tumble town um, and county. We had serial killers. Uh, prostitution was legal for ten years in the town that I'm living in right now, in the early mm-hmm. 1900s. So we were one of those just wild west towns, and. 
some of the structures and some of the buildings that people were murdered in are still there today. Um, and so I get to see this local history and I'm reading like uh, this book and it's like, oh, I've been to that place. That's I've cool. That. And one of my favorites is there is a, um, a bar downtown of Ellingham. It's called the Red Light. It is about a 127 year old building. And the original inhabitant was a, it was a meat market. And the owner was actually brutally murdered. I know that sounds like super not cheerful, but um, they never found the killer. And they have the original meat hook still left in the place. And it's a place where people go and congregate. They have drinks. And it's, it has this really cool history in it. And I love that about my town because they keep the history, but also modernize a lot of things. So the meat guy, the meat guy was butchered. Yep. 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 <laughs> that that one, yep, he was fun. butchered. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's one, um, I'm really into the death positive movement. Um, not a lot of genealogists have heard of it, but it is a movement started by Caitlin Doherty. Um, she's an LA mortician and she really is trying to get people to think about death in different ways. And she has a mm -hmm. book called Salt Gets in Your Eyes, um, all about her experiences working as a mortician. And she's been in the field for 15 years. Um, and, and you've got that book, uh, you showed it to me earlier. You've got that book right with you. Yeah. Yeah. I can actually, um, it's this book. I love it. Um, it's an amazing book. She just put out another one, um, about something about eternity. I can't remember the exact name and I wish I could. Um, but she's a great woman and I actually met her, uh, last beginning of last fall in September at what she calls a death salon, which is a convention that she puts, um, on around the country and brings together other individuals that are into the death positive movement, artists, authors, morticians. Uh, she said I was one of the first genealogists that ever showed up. And I've been actually working with her to try to figure out how to integrate genealogy and death positivity. Um, and death positivity is basically looking at death in a positive way instead of hiding it behind closed doors. Basically just talking about it and talking about the different parts of death, like grief or end of life or funerals or caskets. Like you just talk about it all. And it's really an interesting and fascinating topic that I love. Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting concept and I have no problem with it either uh, like the the positivity um, sorry death positive movement like you were talking about I know that um, for a long time mental health and it still kind of is mental health is uh, been a taboo and it seems almost to kind of ride on the coattails of death being such a taboo as well but it's it shouldn't be it shouldn't be something that's a, a taboo I, I agree and why that ancestor of mine, Catherine Hartman, interests me so much because it's mental health. And I want that to be a more open subject. And for so long, a lot of these subjects, people just shied away from it. And I'm like, I don't, as a genealogist, this person, I don't shy away from anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll be the first yeah. to tell people that I don't shy away from it. As genealogists, we kind of deal with dead people every day. And, and like you said earlier, most of us just love cemeteries and, and love being around them. I, I adore them. They are one of my favorite things to go to. Um, I actually had a photo shoot in a cemetery um, for my business. I was kind of getting some professional headshots uh -huh. and I asked uh, the photographer, she's like, so where do you want to go? I was like, oh, the cemetery. And she goes, oh, I was like, is that okay? She's like, no, that's going to be my first, but yeah, that's fine. And they turned out great. And I loved it. You got head headshots in a cemetery. <laughs> I, I, hope it, I hope it was your own head. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, and I'm actually planning to go to do another photo shoot for something else in a cemetery when there's snow. And so I, I love cemeteries. Oh, that's if cool. I can be a caretaker of a cemetery, that is my ultimate goal is to be, to work at a cemetery and be a caretaker there. I would love to live on the grounds. That would be, that would be heaven for me. <laughs> yeah. So we talked to, we, there, there seems to be this uh, theme that's kind of running through the, the conversation here. A lot, a lot about um, death, not necessarily in a bad way, but we're, we talked about murder and we've talked about uh, cemeteries and genealogy. Um, but there's also, oh, and, and uh, death positive. There's also, you also have uh, do something very interesting for a living too, that it revolves around death. I do. I, uh, I work at a funeral home. Uh, I transport dead bodies or deceased individuals, if you will. Um, I either go pick them up from where they're at and bring them to the funeral home, or I take them from the funeral home elsewhere. Uh -huh. um, mostly to the funeral home, um, as usually we get calls to pick up the deceased individual, bring them in there, store them, and get them ready for a funeral. But I have made a few different kinds of uh, deliveries. I uh, took a body over an international border 
I live 20 minutes from Canada. Yeah, and yeah. I was asked to take a individual from Bellingham to Canada, which was an interesting uh, in experience. And then I once delivered a body to the airport in Seattle. Really? And you just loaded it on an airplane, or you <laughs> yeah? Um, no, I took it to the decar place, and they asked me, "Oh, so what are you delivering?" And I was like, "Do you see my hearse out there? I can take them for me." <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's kind of a neat, like a different, a whole different side uh, that that most people don't even understand or realize that getting bodies from point A to point B where they need to go, and then even to point really C. Yeah, it really is. I've had all sorts of pickups. Um, and at first I thought it would bother me, but it really doesn't. Like after you see your first I guess, dead body, you're kind of like, huh, okay, cool. And you just kind of go with it. At least I did. Yeah. And yeah. it's never bothered me. And it's made me want to look more into genealogy. It's made me be more interested in what I'm already doing. Yeah. We had uh, Franklin Smithers uh, is on here and he said, I always wanted to be a mortician. Everyone told me it was creepy. I'm not a mortician and should have just ignored them. <laughs> I, I agree. You can still be a mortician. There are classes you can take out there. There are a lot of uh, community colleges that now teach them. Um, I've considered going to it, um, but I don't, it's funny. I don't like um, needles in real life. I, I don't know if I'd like them in like dead life either. Um, mm -hmm. I just like picking up the bodies. I actually really enjoy cremations. That's mm -hmm. an odd thing to like, but I like the cremations. Um, I just don't like the cutting into the bodies and having to do. You don't like the uh, the autopsy type of stuff. Got it. Oh, oh, did where'd you go? Oh no! All right. Well, hopefully she'll be back in a little bit, um, and I will try to entertain you in the meantime. <laughs> uh, like I said uh, at the beginning, we kind of had a little bit of a choppy uh, internet connection. Oh, come on back! Come on back! Um, hmm. Oh, that's a good idea, David. Uh, Franklin asked, do you have a podcast? And uh, she's actually considering starting one uh, called uh, Gin and Genealogy. She hasn't started it yet, but uh, she's looking to start it. Let's see if I can get her back on. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry about this, guys. This is uh, <laughs> David. You know, it's a it sucks because you guys have to watch my uh, ugly mug and said of <laughs> getting our interview topic, our interviewee here. I said that's too bad. No, is she coming back? Hmm. All right, just a few more seconds. She's uh, coming back on. This is like great, really great uh, live broadcast streaming. Oh my gosh. Nothing but dead air. <clears throat> oh no. <sighs> Bloopers. <laughs> oh, all right. She's coming back. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, sorry about that, everyone. My internet just seems not to like me. And I did enjoy the comment about it being dead, and that's quite appropriate. <laughs> all right. So, um, we talked a lot about cemeteries. Is that kind of one of your ideal places or research, if you could? It is. And I love cemeteries. One of my goals is actually to visit every single cemetery in Whatcom County. Um, and there is, if I recall, there's about 50 different cemeteries in Whatcom County alone up here. Um, about 40 of them are on public land. I do want to contact the others to see the private ones because I want to be able to photograph the graves mm -hmm. and get all the information. Because as we all know, 
cemeteries don't always last. And I want to be able to have a lasting record for those people who are researching. Um, I actually um, met somebody online who contacted me through the hipster historian. Hey, you don't know me, but I see you live in Bellingham. Can you go to the cemetery and take photographs of my husband's family? I said, absolutely. And oh, so that's it was cool. Really, yeah, it was really neat to be able to do that. And I went to the cemetery. It was one of the bigger ones here. I found them to her. And I don't mind doing that, but I want to be able to keep track of everyone here in Whatcom County that has died so that people can find them later on. Now, do you, uh, did you put those pictures up on find a grave for other people to use too? I do. Yes. I am a big find a grave person. Um, I still have hundreds of photos that I need to put up there. <laughs> I should say snob, but I like my um, photographs to be good. I am an yep. amateur photographer. Um, and I, when I take pictures of graves, I take, three or four of the same grave, just to make sure it looks good. I have everything on there that I want. Sometimes I make it a little artsy because you know, why not? Do you use your uh, a camera or do you use like a phone or a cell phone? Um, depends, but I typically use my DSLR, but if I don't have that with me, I will bring my phone because I'm pretty good at that too. Um, but I, I like taking pictures of gravestones of old buildings. I've thought about getting into post-mortem photography as well. Mm -hmm. um, I basically like anything dead, really. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's your uh, just real quick? What's your opinion on the new find a grave layout? <laughs> <laughs> At all? Um, speaking as someone who's used the internet her whole entire life, and I know sure. I'm younger, uh, and I am a little, but I've had the internet for most of my life. Um, and uh, it reminds me of a GeoCities website from the '90s, the old one, <laughs> and the new one too. And I can't stand it. Someone needs to fix it, like right now. Um, that is my rant. Uh, <laughs> I build websites for friends on the side. Uh, so I just want to be like, okay, you need to fix this and this. And how about you pay me for just tell you what to do, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you used the Billion Graves? Uh, I have not as much. Um, billion Graves kind of came after Find a Grave for me and much into it, but I kind of see it as a copycat. I wish all, all these grave websites would just combine in one information on all of them. Can we just have it in a central place? Yeah, we should do that with newspaper articles too. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is one of the areas of research that you like are specifically interested in? Are, are, are we've covered it already with like cemeteries, or is there something uh, different like like Washington or Utah uh, genealogy? Washington, I do like Utah. I like um, really. I want to know more about international genealogy. Mm -hmm. That is something that's really, uh, I don't speak any other languages other than English at the moment. One of my genealogy goals for this year is actually to learn a different language so that I can read records from other places. Mm -hmm. um, mostly I have my mother for that. She speaks about 10 different languages. So usually when it comes up, I go, uh, what does <laughs> that say? I don't, I don't know what this says. Can you tell me please? Thank you. Um, so yeah. I don't want to do that. More. And uh, I want to be able to read it myself, but um, I would like to just get more into genealogy, become better at it. I'm looking at taking classes from a community college uh, to basically get a certificate so I can learn more professionally about things that you know I could be doing. I've gone to school. I, I like having that academic setting because it gives you a lot more than I feel I could do on my own. Um, sure. But I would and it gives you some accountability too. Yes, it does. I like the accountability part of it because it's like, okay, someone who's been doing this for years, who knows what they're doing, can look at this and be like, okay, maybe you should try this instead. And something that I would never have thought of. Um, but really, just all of genealogy in general, I want to learn more about it. I want to learn more about land records. I want to learn more about what I don't know. Okay. I really enjoy Blaine Bettinger's book. Um, I know nothing about science and I'm really bad at understanding it. So it's like a page by page book for me. Um, but I find that the science behind DNA is really fascinating and yeah. it really is. Yeah. It's the facts. Like people have family legends, but this is literally the facts of who you are. Yeah. And me, that's is like, people be like, well, my grandmother said we're, you know, German. Um, but this test is something else different. It's like, no, that's actually who you are. Your grandmother might think you're German, but you're probably French. Yeah, maybe you went through Germany for a little bit. 
Uh, we got Jason Hansen here on, uh, and he asked, what language do you want to learn this year? Well, I started out last year or the year before wanting to learn Italian because I have a lot of uh, clients with Italian background. I'm thinking Italian, French, maybe Spanish, but I figure if I can learn one of them, a lot of them have the romance background sure. uh, so that I can get one and then go, oh, this is very similar. Oh, I already kind of know this language. So that is kind of what I'm working towards. I uh, took German in high school, three years of it, um, and it's helped a little bit with some of the Norwegian languages uh, too. Like I can recognize several words in Dutch and Swedish and things like that. It's, it's been know, helpful. There, um, but I really would like, I love a program or a course that is specifically aimed at genealogists in general, because mm. a lot of these courses that you learn with, with language in, they're not really aimed at genealogists. They're aimed at traveling and or everyday conversation. And most of a genealogist bathroom is, we usually want to know when this person died and or the city name and or, you know, these other things that most language courses don't teach, which I would really like to see happen um, with any of the universities or colleges or community colleges that teach adding a language course course in there specified at genealogists something that might cover the vital records uh and some maybe uh religious um uh, terms and then uh, uh why am i drawing a blank here a probate records like wills and uh and yes. uh, things yes. like that absolutely because i look at some of that and i can kind of google it but it, it's like <laughs> i think this is a thing word but it might have changed over the years and knowing how the words change i think would be a really good course and i think it would help out a lot of genealogists especially a lot of ones who are going to school for this yeah and also we get to see over time like this this uh, foreign language course could over time sort of talk about how words have shifted a little bit like hey they used to use this word and now they no longer use it or this word is replacing or something like that too that could be interesting i'd love uh, that That's i would totally take a course for Jane Rollins in the chat here suggests that uh, in Family Search, there's a foreign language word list that uh, is in their wiki. Oh, then and, uh, I have a lot of printouts everywhere going. Yeah. Is <laughs> and I've used Duolingo in the past, kind of like a free. I, uh, I love Duolingo. I started using uh, learning Italian with Duolingo. Yeah. Now, when you first started getting into genealogy, uh, when you or get back into genealogy, I should say, what is it something that you would have liked to have known or, or you would like to go back in time and tell yourself? Oh, gosh. Um, don't do everything all at once. Um, okay. uh, another one is when you're starting a family tree, especially when you have, and I'm going to put this the best way I can, polygamists in the family tree. <laughs> um, don't take <laughs> I heard this term, when your family tree is more like a wreath, Yes, that's a great way to put it is um, research a little bit at a time. Um, and it wasn't my family tree I was researching, it was somebody else's. But because this person had a lot of polygamists, there, were, there was a lot of Aaron and marrying, a lot of facts that were coming in were wrong. Mm -hmm. And I have still, I because the family is so big, um, and this tree is so big, and I have so many people on it, I just have not gone back to certain areas and like double check them because I know I need to. Hey, there's so much conflicting information. I will get to you later, but I think what I wish I would have done is gone, okay, I'm going to start at this family, follow this line and get everything done. But I was so excited to just find everyone that I just built big family trees. Yeah. And I am now having to go back through all of it going, okay, oh, no, you weren't married to that. Oh, yes, you were. Are you sure you were married to that person? I'm, I don't know. Um, I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have had a lot of the basic books. Um, and basically trust yourself is really what I would have thought. Cause I, I really got down on myself saying, well, you don't know anything. You're not a real genealogist and why I'm not certified. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I am a real yeah. genealogist. I eat, breathe and sleep dead people. I literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, so it just trust yourself and if this is what you want to do do it like don't be afraid to delve in and don't be afraid to ask questions i started asking questions of my mom and other people and going what is this i wish i would have known a little more about like the the networks like next gen i'm really glad that somebody suggested it to me like i would have people like hey i don't know you you should be in this because i think you would like this and i was mm -hmm. like oh 
well, I didn't know there are other young genealogists like myself. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I kind of stumbled into it the same way. <laughs> Just looking for some younger genealogists to share this excitement I, about. It kind of happened accidentally. Um, I actually started out with a interview on my blog. Um, I like to do interviews with people. Um, I used to work as a social media assistant and interviews for the company that I was working for were one of the, our biggest blogs that were always read. And I wanted to interview people that don't necessarily get interviewed. I want to mm -hmm. have interviews with um, people who are gay, people who are transgender, people who are childless and genealogists, uh, lots of different backgrounds. And that's really what I am trying to promote is that people can love genealogy. People can do genealogy and be part of this and have backgrounds. Um, and so I'm trying to include those people in my genealogy, in my writing, in my blogs, that people know that this is out there. People are out there, and it's not just your 80-year-old religious Aunt Mary who's doing your family history. Yeah. Now, do you attend conventions? Uh, I have not, but I will be attending Roots Tech for the very, very first time uh, coming up in February. Okay. I'm nervous, excited, terrified, and happy because I have no clue what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> what about... Um... Have you considered submitting your own talk to give? Because you've got some great stories and some great lessons you can teach some other folks. I have considered it. And it's funny seeing as you're interviewing me live, I think I'm a terrible public speaker. I talk too fast. I trip over my words and I swear a lot. Um, and so I will. But it would be a fun challenge for me. Um, but I have not considered it yet, but I'm going to be looking into it in the next year as something that I would like to try. I took about uh, a year of Toastmasters, and I'm sure there's a local one uh, where you're at, but that helped me with my public speaking so much. Like, you can just go in and you practice, and you give speeches time and time again, and the Toastmasters uh, helped me out, and yeah, I, I cuss a lot too, and I have to hold my tongue at some <laughs> <laughs> these talks that I give. It's definitely something I want to do. And I think I'd have a lot of stories and give be able to give a different perspective based on my experiences with death and dead people. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And your opinion on find a grave. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have some opinions on that. You know, I have, I have opinions on genealogy and polygamy and just everything in it. It gets complicated and varied and I love it. <laughs> Now, where can people find you on the web? They can find me on Instagram at the Hipster Historian. They can mm -hmm. finally find me at my blog, the Hipster Historian. Uh, on Twitter, I couldn't get all of Hipster Historians, so it's Hipster Historia. <laughs> and you can also find me at uh, Life Stories Transcription Services. Um, that is also on the web, and that is also a Facebook page. Um, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, but I, I will be, I'm pretty much anywhere. I'm also on Reddit and I'm on a variety of social me media sites under who knows how many different names. <laughs> so people can find you just about anywhere. And we've got those links here in the show notes, um, of the video. And, uh, so it's going to be your first time at Roots Tech and, uh, you might, you very well may have some people who watch this interview and come up and say, ah, oh, I saw you on the next gen faces of next gen live and, uh, introduce themselves. I'm a little nervous to be honest because uh, that's happened to me in other experiences, other things. People are like, hi, I know you. And I'm like, oh, who are you? Why do you know me? <laughs> um, I, like the story I like to tell is um, since my mother is so uh, well known. I'm going to give a shout out to her. Anna Darby is my mother, and I'm sure she's watching right now. I don't know if she's going to comment, but hi, mom. Thanks for getting me into this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, uh, she's great at this and she's always supported me in this. And, uh, last, I want to say last summer, last spring, I was attending my local, uh, genealogically association and I'd gone a couple times. Uh, most people there are probably about 50 years old plus, mm -hmm. uh, at the time I didn't care. And most of the people with, I mean, there were lady, old, older ladies going, why is there a pink haired girl here? Like they would just stare at me and I'm like, hi, I like genealogy. Um, <laughs> um, and after a few times I went, um, I kind of got to know people. And one time I was walking up to the front door and one of the gals goes, hi, Becky. And I was like, oh, you know me? She goes, yeah, no, I just saw your mom like a week ago at a, at a convention. And I was like, oh, okay. You know my mom too. This is great. And I don't mind. I actually really love having her in this. She is really good at this and 
support this dream of mine. And it's just really fun to have people know her and be like, hey, yeah, no, I got my love of this from her. That's so awesome. I love hearing that. Well, uh, the interview is just about over. Um, before we go, is there anything you want to you wanna say? Hmm. Always make sure you check your genealogy when you meet friends and or dating people. That is what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of stories for that, but one of my favorites is friends. Um, I was doing genealogy on uh, my now ex-husband, and he comes from a polygamous line of people, lots of polygamy in his family. And I came across a name that just like struck my my nerve. And I was like, I know this last name, but it, it can't be my friends. It cannot be related to my friends. There's no way it can be related to them. Like, okay, I'm gonna ask them. And I was like, okay, uh, are, are you related to this person? Like, why do you ask? And I was like, well, I'm doing his genealogy. Um, <laughs> did you, are they your relatives? They're like, yeah, yeah, they are. And I was like, oh, cousins. That's not weird. All right, cool. <laughs> Uh, and it keeps happening to me is that I would find people that he was related to. And luckily I have no polygamy in my family, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but, uh, it's very interesting how pretty much most people in, I find in Utah, if you have a polygamy background, you're all probably related to each other in one form or another. Um, my actual, um, paternal cousin is also fifth cousins with my ex-husband. Oh, geez. So... Yeah, so it gets really interesting when you find out you're like, oh, everybody is just connected. And I'm like, yep, I am none of that. I'm going to step way back. And <laughs> I'm like, who is your family? And do I know them? And if you know, if we're going to date, I need to know all about your family history. <laughs> Give me your tree before we, uh, you know. Exactly. Give me your it. family tree before we go on a date. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> I love it. Uh, just like a, there should be like a genealogy uh dating site or there probably is but that'd be that'd be great if there were like, sure yeah like a like a little offshoot of ancestry or or my heritage or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well Bex, this is this has been so fantastic. Thank you very much for sitting down and taking the time to to talk to us and letting us get to know you. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Well thank you so much. I'm really excited to get to know more people especially in the next gen network. Um I hope to see a lot of you at, at Roots Tech and on the web. Just hit me up. I don't always reach out, so reach out to me, and I, I will respond to you. I promise. Thank you very much. Well, uh, that will wrap it up for this week's episode of Faces of Next Gen Live. We will be back uh, streaming another interview in a few weeks. I think in about two weeks, maybe the 22nd. I don't have my calendar up here. But it's going to be uh, Blaine Bettinger, or Bettinger. We're going to ask him how to say his last name, actually. But uh, tune in for that. And, uh, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Faces of Next Gen Live. Take care.